morning viewers, this is Gag Farms Nigerian Limited and yours sincerely is Mr. Tukumene. Today we have a very, very interesting topic we are going to share with you. Uh, in our last uh, you know, talks, we've been telling you people that we operate integrate farming. We have our plants department, grocery department, uh, cows area and the, you know, the beds. My esteemed viewers, we have people from Afan. They are visiting here in Gag Farm to, you know, tell you people how best you can rear your pigs and make profit. Gentlemen from Afan, please. Yeah, um, good morning, viewers. My name is Uche Onoa representative of uh, All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Abia State Chapter. And um, I will introduce on my left, a member of our team, Engineer Henry Madume. Viewers, uh, I think uh, it's going to be a pleasure uh, listening to what we have to say here today. You're welcome. And, um, our instructor for today is an experienced uh, pig producer from a farm. I will um, allow him to introduce himself. Good day, viewers. My name is Chris Ogaze. We shall try as much as possible to do justice to today's uh, gathering here, so that at the end, you will go home with something. Yeah, um, we are going to start off immediately and we'll try as much as possible to make uh, the, uh, the discussion to flow freely and uh, uh, without uh, taking much time. Our topic for today is a uh, pig farming for beginners. Pig farming for beginners. So we are going to highlight what it takes to produce pigs for consumption and for industry and the benefits and um, all other things involved. So pig, pig farming could be a rewarding venture for be beginners. We are going to take about five or six points and elaborate them and each uh, session we come with a question and answers from uh, our team so part of um, what we are going to start with number one we are going to talk on research and planning for any um, body that want to go into pig farming or pig production we also talk of uh, number two the housing and the space requirements then we'll talk on uh, feeding and nutrition. The fourth item we will we'll talk on today is the health care of the animals. Then we we'll talk of uh, waste management, then marketing and sales. These are the points we are going to talk on today. And um, I hope at the end of the day, it will be a rewarding uh, uh, discussion for everybody that um, is watching. So I'll hand over to our instructor for today, Mr. Chris Ogazi. Thank you. Um, good day once again viewers we are going to talk about uh, pig production the life cycle of pig production we know that every system in life uh, has some some components that you must cover if you want to be uh, effective and profitable in any venture you are going into so in pig production if you want to start pig production business you have to first of all analyze the situation all the various components about the, the, the peak production. Then, after the analysis, you begin investigation. You investigate to discover 
all the various components because it's only after the after proper investigation that you can actually conclude your analysis then after that you go into design you design the system after designing the system you now go into building that's development even in housing it's almost the same thing you have to do the architectural plan before you develop then after development and building, you now go into implementation. That is the actual. Then after the implementation, you now talk about uh, you review. Review will tell you whether you are making profit or not. If you are not making profit, maybe you find one or two places to do adjustments. So now let us pick item number one. That is um, the the breed of the of the pigs. Now in pig breeds. There are about uh, 180 breeds of pigs. So to mention some of the, the breeds, we have Yorkshire breed, Landrace, Hampshire, Duroc, Chester White, Large White, China Poland, Kunenko, Vietnamese Port Belly, Mangaleka, Black Iberian, Baxia, Red White, Tamworth, etc. So, uh, there are no actually actual authority that has succeeded in exhausting the pig breeds. Having mentioned these breeds, uh, there are some general purpose breeds that uh, one can capitalize on. General purpose breeds that are common. That's uh, where you can actually select and begin to, to produce upon. So these general purpose breeds, some of them are good in meat, some of them are good for lard, and some of them are good for for leather depending on your purpose of going into pig production so we have uh, some specific breeds that are commonly available so, like the large whites you commonly see it uh, here and there in pig farms you have the land race which is also available here and there then yorkshire uh, duroc and hampshire these are the ones available in our environment where you can actually start uh, uh, your business on and you'll be able to make some good returns at the end of the day so the next item here is housing housing and the cost of the housing in determining your housing you first of all look at your budget the budget of uh, what you want to do and then the number of pigs you have in mind to rear and then uh, the the sizes you intend to keep whether it's the winners or the growers or the, or the sowers, whether you are going to go into breeding or not. So in housing of the pigs, you have a intensive pig farming. Uh, intensive pig farming, you build many houses close by. Then you have uh, semi-intensive, you have fewer houses and more of uh, uh, empty land. Then you have extensive. Extensive, you just build shelter for them, fence a large expanse of land, and then just pour them inside there. So that is uh, about uh, housing. So depending on which one you want to go into. The next item is uh, feeding and the cost of the feeding. In, our, in pig production worldwide, there are many feed items, like, uh, like uh, if you break them into category, energy sources, protein sources, vitamins and minerals. Energy sources, you talk about uh, wheat, barley, malt, and so corn, and so on and so forth. Then in our own local environment here, you talk about uh, cassava peel, brewery waste. These are the things that are commonly available here. Uh, and again, plantain peels in our environment here. Then you can also complement it with grass or some other plants like uh, popo, and um, purple and uh, what is it, plantain or banana, banana stems. That's in energy sources. Then protein sources. You can think of a, you can think of a fish meal. You can think of a blood meal. You can think of a soya bean meal. And what have you? These are the protein sources. Then again, minerals and multivitamins. In the area of minerals and multivitamins, you can supplement it with, uh, with drugs. There are some minerals and multivitamins injections, some of them in tablet form, some of them in liquid form. 
Aside that, we can depend on, on grass and vegetables because grass and vegetables are known to contain almost all the minerals and multivitamins that uh, pigs need, even we humans. So then you talk about the antibiotics. For the pigs to remain healthy, you have to give them antibiotics occasionally because of their, especially if their, the sources of their food are not, uh, are not very, very neat because pigs are known to survive on garbage sometimes. So in the process, they will build up some, some ailments and sicknesses, and bacteria and viruses in their system. So occasionally you give them antibiotics and you deworm them. That's on the area of uh, medication. Then you can think of uh, enzymes. Enzymes will help you to, will help them to digest their feed faster so that you get a greater rate of uh, feed conversion. When you add enzymes to their, to their feed, that enzyme will help the, the food to digest almost near to 100% so that their body will make use of all the available nutrients in the, in the food. Then flavoring. You can uh, make them to have more appetite by putting some flavor in their feed. The flavor in their feed will make them to have more appetite. Their food will be more appetizing so that they will enjoy their feed more and want to eat more and then add more more weight. Healthcare and the cause. Pigs are susceptible to a number of ailments as they, as they grow in their life cycle, just like uh, other animals, including man. One of the identifiable or some of the identifiable ailments are um, respiratory diseases. Respiratory diseases are, are one of the most common health problems in pigs. They can cause a variety of bacteria, virus, and parasites. Symptoms, symptoms, are, symptoms are noticed when they start coughing, or when they start vomiting, or when they start scratching their body. These are some of the elements of uh, uh, how to know that pigs have some digestive diseases. So, and there are some medications for the digestive sicknesses. We shall go into it later on. Then another sickness common in pigs is sick skin disease. Skin diseases are also common in pigs. When you see them scratching, it means they have some skin disease. When you see their hairs falling off, they have hair loss. It means they have a skin disease. And then when they have scabs, something like wounds, then they have a skin disease. Then eye disease. Eye diseases are also relatively common in pigs. A variety of factors cause their eye diseases. Symptoms include redness of their eyes, discharge from the eye. These are common symptoms of eye disease. Then metabolic disorder. Metabolic disorder leads to indigestion, sometimes uh, no improper utilization of the feed you give them. There are also drugs for, 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 the, for the indigestion. Pause. Here are some tips to help prevent common ailments in pigs. You have to vaccinate your pigs. There are available vaccines that one can use to vaccinate the, the pigs. You have to monitor their health then you have to administer warm expellers. Then you provide balanced diet. So the following tips can help your pigs grow healthy and free from common ailments. Now, the common vaccines available. You have erysipelas. This is a bacterial infection that can, be, that can cause skin lesions, fever, and health in pigs. Vaccine name is Erysipelas vaccina. Then, parvovirus. Parvovirus. This is also another virus infection that can cause abortion, stillbirth, and death in piglets. Vaccine is a parvovirus vaccine. Then, exotic pneumonia. This is a bacterial infection that can cause respiratory problems in pigs. Vaccine name is a exotic pneumonia vaccine then atrophic 
rhinitis. This is a bacterial infection that can cause respiratory problems and productive problems in pigs. Vaccine, atrophic rhinitis vaccine. Mycoplasma hypnomonia. This is a bacterial infection that can cause respiratory problems in pigs. Vaccine, mycoplasma hypnomonia vaccine. Then, leptospirosis. This is a bacterial infection that can cause abortion, stillbirth, and death in pigs. Vaccine, leptospirosis vaccine. Then, porcine production and respiratory syndrome. This is a viral infection that can cause respiratory problems and reproductive problems in pigs. Vaccine, PRRS vaccine. So under budgeting, having identified all these items we have been mentioning here, you now go into the market and do your market survey to find out cost of each component, both for building, health, what have you, so that you know the amount of money you are supposed to look for before you start going into development of the, of the project. That's it. Budgeting. Under budgeting, Having gone to your market, did your market survey and gathered all the cost of the materials, you now sit down and prepare your budget before you swing into action. Waste management. Waste management is very important in pig production because if you don't consider it, it will form a kind of environmental nuisance, both the odor and the smell, things like that. Uh, before you know uh, environmental health will start harassing you. So you have to manage the waste in such a way that it will be profitable. Waste management, you can generate, you can, you can convert the waste into manure. It's a very, very profitable compost manure. You can equally convert it into, into cooking gas. There are devices to digest them and convert them into cooking gas where you can even sell the gas from the from the waste generated in the pig farm. Marketing and sales. In this part of the world, we hardly produce enough, enough pig or pork to go around. So oftentimes, butchers will be after you. They will be coming to be asking you, do you have, do you have? But however, there are some marketing strategies that one can adopt. If you can create a co-room, like happens uh, abroad, create a co-room where you can butcher them yourself, process them, and take them inside the cool room so that anybody who wants will come there and buy. You can equally sell direct to restaurants and the consumers, whereby you have a table and be cutting according to demand. You know, so that's all about uh, marketing. Yeah, welcome back viewers. I believe uh, we have been enlightened enough on the the topics we introduced earlier and um, we thank our experienced uh, pig producer we are now going to take questions from um, the, our viewers on ground and um, the questions will um, see through more light on the topics so that uh, we understand them better thank you Mr. Moderator, thank you so far. Still, I have a question. When you talk about uh, rearing, you mentioned semi-intensive, intensive and uh, defensing method. Extensive. Extensive. Now, as a beginner and uh, that has the limited resources, which of the methods do you advise that one should go in? Thank you. To answer this question, it's not a, a straight jacket something. If you are a beginner who doesn't have enough money, and maybe you inherited large expanse of land, you can buy one or two pieces and throw them there. Just make sure that they don't wander away. You have started. Again, but uh, from the commercial aspects, I would advise a beginner to go into intensive. Because in intensive, you can just have one room, let's say 12 by 12 room, you start with five. That is a 
three females and two males. You can equally make it one male, but two, two males, because sometimes the male cannot be performing, it, cannot, it, it may not be fertile. So in order to, to avoid eventuality, you have two males, so that if one is failing, the other one will do the work. So as a beginner, I advise intensive, where I can start small and then you, you grow. If anybody wants to add something, I add the choir. Yeah, uh, another question is in the breeds. Here we have land race and the large white predominantly. And uh, we know that uh, pigs are very prone to a lot of disease, as you have said. Among these two breeds that I've just mentioned, which one do you think that a beginner should start with? for a proper management, you know, minimal management and, uh, you know, profit. Thank you. I think uh, the bridge available locally, you missed one. That, has the, that should be the Duroc. Duroc is also locally available. But uh, almost all pigs are very, very resistant to diseases. The only disease that uh, defeats them is African swine fever which I know they have found a vaccine for it, but they have not yet commercialized it. So almost every pig can, you can start with any pig that is locally available. Uh, all those other 180 breeds you have, some of them are not found in this, our region. And some of them, you can't even commercialize them. Some of them are as small as, a, what do I, what do I say, maybe small dog. You know, like in dogs, yeah. you have giant dogs and small dogs. Some of them are so small that you won't even think of very dwarf. Uh, very dwarfish. You can't think of considering commercializing them. So a beginner can start from intensive, where I can start small and then grow big. Another question, sir, is uh, you mentioned during nutrition, you mentioned enzymes. Enzymes, I know, are proteins and are being secreted, secreted by the body, by the action of the you know, brain and the rest of them. So is there any, you know, artificial enzyme and uh, is that source, can that be sourced locally? Thank you. There are artificial enzymes that are available in the medicine stores, animal, animal medicine stores. We know that the body secretes enzymes, but then this is an enhancement. It's just like in diseases, the body has a way of naturally fighting diseases but you need to help the body by taking drugs. So enzymes are also like that. It will help the, make the digestion faster, faster so that uh, there will be greater absorption rates. Okay. We talked about uh, vaccination. At what age can vaccination be applied? Thank you. As low as uh, one week, seven days, you can start vaccinating them as low as early as one week okay. you can start vaccinating okay. them and uh, maybe possibly the person might also have like a vaccination schedule yes so you know to guide so that at different you don't, stages at, at different stages you, you know you know you don't miss out yes. because mainly it's preventive uh -huh. another important uh, stage where vaccination is needed is after winning immediately you win you should also vaccinate them at that stage before they start um, eating um, the other by themselves. By themselves. Okay. In your nutrition, you mentioned plantain stems, grasses, and uh, I know they are all fibers. Now, how do you give when you are, you know, giving them the applying their ration? Do you mix this, the chips, with your normal, you know, like here, we give rice bran, we give wheat, we give PKC, palm kernel cake. What proportion do you, of, of fiber, do you add to your ration? Thank you. This uh, plantain, banana stem, and uh, purple, purple stem and leaves, contain fiber quite all right, but it also contain minerals and multivitamins. It's not just fiber. 
uh, the proportion you can say let me say one quarter of their feed would be okay can form the the, the vegetables or grasses uh, the way you mix it depending on if you have machine if you have shredder shredding machine where you can pieces it if possible we say you grind them and then mix it with the food fine but if you don't have them you can just use knife and butcher them pigs are uh, they, they have grinders in their mouth they will grind it themselves uh -huh. so but you just to aid them if you have a machine you grind it first before you give them yeah but uh, in terms of uh, feeding them with uh, fiber all these uh, minerals uh, leaves grasses i've seen a lot of uh, farms that have been they prefer throwing them in like that into the pen because um, it creates a kind of um, activity for them also exactly, exactly. Exactly. so that they can be moving around exactly. and um, you know playing with each other with it yes. so it's also good to throw in the stem of uh, papa and uh, uh, banana and plantain leaves like that okay. i know that uh, fibers enhance gastric motility that is they can it can aid passing out waste product but what of a situation whereby the fiber kind of block the anus and they prevent you know that the, the animal will have difficulty in excreting how do you look at that area by application of ss you know mentioning but, uh, plantain stems grasses that is you know all these elephant grasses that grows anyhow that contains these fibers so that is why I want to know the exact portion, proportion that can be added so that it will not in any way hamper their excretory processes. Okay. Um, I think he mentioned one quarter. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, one quarter. What I can you know. add there before our instructor coming is uh, uh, like the uh, plantain and uh, uh, banana stem. Um, you don't actually throw in the overmatured ones like that. You peel the outer layer out. Out. You will not get to the softer inner um, stem of the, exactly. uh, the succulent area. Yes. So, and uh, apart from that, uh, for digestion, there are other waste uh, fruits that you can also throw in that will help the digestion, like watermelon um, waste, cucumber. Um, cucumber uh, carrot, guava. With guava, mango, all these uh, mother fruits will also uh, not allow their uh, tummy to be um, blocked or anything like that. Okay. So if I may add, if I may add, that's why the best is if you have money, buy the shredding machine. Because it, when the strands of the fiber is long, that's when it can block their excreta. It has happened to me before. You, you, you just see the pig will just be leaning, leaning, leaning. It will not be eating. Uh, until ultimately, you slaughter it. It's when, when we were uh, opening the stomach that we saw what caused it. So that's why if you have the machine, it's better you shred it. But because if you shred it, the length of the strands will be broken into pieces. So it can no longer block their, their excreta. So that is it. Okay, sir, please. Uh, there is a little thing that I want to uh, get from you, please. Uh, as a beginner, as a piggery beginner, if you want to start up the uh, uh, pickering uh, business, how many pig will you put in, in each room so that it will be content with them? How many pigs? Okay. This is a question of uh, proportionality. Let's take, let's take 12 by 12 room. 12 by 12 room, you can put 30 winners inside it. 30 winners of pigs. But after two months, you will reduce the number. You will reduce it by, say, five. After another two months, you reduce it by, say, five. Until you will leave about uh, 10 when they are fully grown. That will stay there and be producing. When anyone takes in and is about to produce, you bring it out and give it a separate room. If you don't do that... At a point, they will start cannibalizing themselves when they are choked up. They will reduce their number by themselves. 
they will kill one and eat. After some time, they will wait for some time again. If they are choked up again, they will kill another one and still eat it until you realize what is causing it and you by yourself decongest them. So for a room of 12 by 12, you can put 30 pieces. If you are thinking of, if you are thinking of uh, maybe 24 by 24, you think of 60. That's why I said it's a thing of proportionality. So as you increase the number of rooms, you, you calculate if 12 by 12 will contain 30, then 24 by 24 will contain uh, 60 in that order. If it's a large hall, in that order. That is it. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, please, don't be offended. Uh, uh, how many times can once give them food? Because you know they are animals, they eat at any time. How many times can once give them, as, as an apply them food in each day? In fact, for best production, for best output, never you allow feed to, to get dried up in their, in their pen, in their feeding trough. You must always make sure that it's feed there because they will always be eating. And as far as you can afford it, they are always, they're always eating. Before six months, it will surprise you the, their size. It's only when you don't have enough feed that you say, let me give two or three times. Uh -huh. Because maybe you are rationing your feed. But if you have enough feed to give them, Maybe you can feed three times, give them in the morning. In the afternoon, you come and put small again. In the evening, you put another one. That That's it. Depends on your pocket. Yeah, and another thing on that too, if I might add. So it also depends apart from the, like the capacity of the owner. Because uh, if you don't have enough staff and you're not always around, you might not be, have a chance to be feeding them two, three, four times a day. So in most farms that I've been to, they feed them twice for optimal production also. The only thing is that you put enough feed, maybe in the morning, then in the evening, you also put enough feed. That should be able to, to sustain them because by the time you see the um, um, enthusiasm, enthusiasm they used to eat, you will not know whether they are full or not because at times there will be food in the trough. They will, you see, see them, to, they will can doze off. But maybe when they are full and tired, they are resting. When they wake up, they will continue. So if you are managing your staff, I believe twice a day should be adequate. By that time, what I, I believe we should be talking of is the measure of food per animal per day. That we need some um, analysis and... Um, it's not as if the measure of food is um, it's not written on stone, but for as a business, if you are hiring pig as a business, you also need to know the measure of um, feed, which translates to your cost per week or per month. So you can also, uh, for some farms, they measure, uh, use a big paint bucket to measure. Maybe for an animal um, population of maybe 30, like 30 growers, you can, can measure out uh, uh, six of those buckets uh, after mixing six of those buckets in the morning and six of them also in the uh, evening. And I believe that should take care of that quantity of, uh, of pig. I want to add something there. You can, you can equally, you, you can equally put enough food that will last them for the whole day. But from experience, we discover that if you put enough food that will last them for the whole day, after eating and they are okay, they will start playing with the food. They will scatter it all everywhere in the room. But at the end of the day, the food will now mix with the excreta, even though they will see end up eating it. But then it's not very hygienic. So if you have enough staff, full-time staff, dedicated staff that will be around maybe eight hours of the day, if you can be given two times or three times in a day in measured quantities so that they will not be playing with the food, it's also okay. So I have a question. You talk about the vaccine given to a miscarriage a sewer. What is a vaccine for the mis for miscarriage for the treatment of miscarriage? To prevent to prevent miscarriage, the the vaccine. 
the name of the vaccine? Uh, we didn't say there's a particular vaccine to prevent miscarriage, but we identified general treatments that will prevent miscarriage and uh, still baths okay. in general. So, but if we if we refer to our documentation, maybe we able to pinpoint the particular one, but I don't have it uh, off head like that. On the aspect of waste, you say it's also a gas. Yes. I don't know. Mm. Uh, you can have a biodigester. They call it biodigester. You construct it. You pour the waste inside there. Then you put a device that will be taking the methane. I think it's methane, it's methane gas. Methane, methane, yeah. It will be storing it into your cylinder. Then you use it and cook. Cooking gas. Yes, it's possible. In fact, it, 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 it's already existing in some farms. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's you existing in some the, farms. There is also something that looks like balloon. It looks like so that because uh, if you don't tap the gas, yeah, the pressure can also get so high that the, the system will explode. All right. So when you tap out the gas, you can have a, another contaminant like balloon to be expanded. So from there now, you can pipe it into if you have kitchen, you can pipe into your kitchen or you can pipe it through a compressor. The compressor will now increase the pressure through which you put it into gas cylinder. cylinder. So it becomes another source of uh, income, income for you. Exactly. All right. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's, it's a commercializer. They even use it to run all this uh, alternative energy. You can also use it to run generator. Your generator. Even your car. Uh -huh. You have an adapter. If you have the fuel uh, part, you put the gas part, your generator will be running and you have electricity. Me, I'm thinking of it because I have enough pig excreta, pig dung. So I have enough. I'm thinking of it when once is financially possible, I will install one. And of course, after generating the gas, you now evacuate the, the remaining waste, dry it, and it's manure, organic manure. It's another source, another of, source income. of income. Uh, that, that means uh, we, we, that means we will start selling the the excreta now. <laughs> for ah, the for income. This, this, this is money. Sorry. Yes. This yes. is money. It's already business. Mm -hmm. We are talking of adding value to the escrita more. That's when we talk of the, the production of uh, biogas and methane. Uh, uh, sir, I have uh, one question that everyone asks you about the feeding the uh, pig. Because all types of feed that we are using to feed our pig, if they eat, the pig is digested. But we get the types of the feed that we feed them, they eat their feed, not digest. That's what they return them back, like rice, chaff. So I've been wondering what that thing of feed costs my pig for inside. Yes, I've experienced that rice, chaff. Mm. I have the same experience. I used to use it. But when I discovered it doesn't digest it, I stopped. But I'm thinking that if you have grinder and grind it to powder, maybe you introduce enough enzyme, I think they will they will digest it. But if you just give it to them like that, my own experience, they don't digest it. They'll just bring it out like that. So you what are, are you... Correct. Okay, what are you thinking the thing of it cost them for inside? It will only cause them uh, malnutrition. Malnutrition. Because you are, they are eating so much, they are getting so little. They will not be growing. That's it. it will not cause, I don't think it will cause extra sickness. Okay, what suppose you do? about it yeah that's what i said after you feed them then sit down like but you expect you suspect that will cause problem for them after you stop using to feed them mm -hmm. with that rice chaff so what suppose you do after you 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 noticing they are eating their shit and like this what they digest no immediately i stopped they stopped they started digesting the new one i'm giving them so i didn't do any extra thing but change, uh, change the food uh, style, uh, maybe you know, like uh, all these uh, uh, brew waste, it has a lot of energy in it. Okay, mm -hmm. that one might give because what you're actually looking at, what you are looking at, obviously, is increasing the body weight because it's meat production. Actually, you are looking at, you know, you are not doing producing pig for pet, you know, it's fat. Okay. So you have to be looking at food, the feed that will give them a lot of energy. Maize, you know, like all this cassava waste he mentioned, 
So if you are giving them those rice, uh, you know, chaff, and they are not uh, utilizing it properly, you stop giving it to them. You start, you go to cassava uh, waste, yam waste, and all the other types of waste, you know. And uh, I think uh, our facilitator can also advise you more on uh, how to source adequate uh, uh, nutrients, adequate food for them, because I think that's another area you have to be looking at. If you, you can assess rice and rice is not giving you what you want, I mean the rice waste, the chaff is not giving you what you want. How do you, you should be looking at how to source alternatives. So you have to find out from the experts how they source their own, what other, uh, what other alternatives they use to, 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 to produce that uh, big, you know, big body mass. Because if it's not growing big, you can't make money. You understand? In, in fact, let me just add, because of this problem he mentioned now, I have gone to buy a mill machine. I have it now, but I have not yet installed it. I also bought the engine that will drive it, but I have not. In installation is another thing. Gradually, gradually, I'll be there. Because I believe that by the time you grind it to powder and then put enzyme, I believe they will digest it. When I get to that bridge, I think I will cross it. So. Okay, for the second uh, question that I be want to I wanna ask you about, uh, I notice I hear you talk about the leaf, uh, popo and cassava stem and other things that you say if you are using to feed your pigs, it is very important. So I be want to ask you about the, all those leaves. You get the special leaf that you use to give your pig or any leaf you will feed give them. Again, uh, secondly, so they are talking, say, uh, this thing, what was the name? Of the this thing, a PKC. We are using PKC. So can we feed use the grass, grind them, mix and PKC, feed them? Okay. Or oh, again, the second uh, rice chaff. We get two types of rice chaff. Boiling boiling rice chaff there, but that one be the one that we using cause us problem. We get the one that uh, they never boil it. So that rice chaff we go feed use them. I believe that if you the, if it cannot digest the boiled one, it will be more difficult to digest the unboiled one. Now. Unboiled. It's very logical. So you mentioned the cassava stem. We didn't say cassava stem. Even cassava leaf contains hydrocyanic acid. So cassava stem and leaf, even cassava peel itself, it's not good to get it that day and give it to them that day. You have to allow it for one or two days to break down so that they the uh, had cyanide will break down you understand me so you don't feed them with cassava stem or cassava leaves unless you allow it for some days to break down you don't feed them when they are fresh mm -hmm. you don't feed them when they are fresh okay then uh, the leaves you mentioned it's not every leaf oh. there are some specific leaves that pig eat it's not every some pigs some leaves can kill them oh. even man some leaves can kill man so there are specific ones but there are plenty of them we can show you all the ones that we have identified that pigs eat. So that's it. Okay, my last question is here. Like, uh, like a pig farm has a meat, and you are training them because of meat. So they know they grow. Is it something like for breed or feeding? The problem is for feeding or they for breed. Because of the feed, they feed, they know they grow. Everything day for one place. I mean, one know what's the problem. Is it for breed or feeding? If you are feeding them, they are not growing. It's either, it's either they are sick, they have sickness inside, or the feed is not nutritious. I believe it's either of these two things. If you are feeding them, they are not growing. That's why, that's one area we didn't mention. It's good to work with the veterinarians. Very important. If you notice something like that, they will come and take blood sample and go to lab. You understand? They will come and take their blood sample, go to lab and know exactly if they have sickness. If they have sickness, they will treat that sickness. If it is not sickness, then their feed is not nutritious. These are the, the either of the two things that make them to be eating and they are not growing. Maybe plenty worms. Yeah, they have uh -huh. worms will be taking everything. Uh -huh. Instead of them growing fat, the worm will be growing fat. Inside their stomach. Inside their stomach, you know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Everybody, thank you so much, mm. viewers. I believe we've come to the end of this session of our 
discussion on peak produ production for beginners. In our second session, we will um, talk further on some of these points that we have enumerated today. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.